The new freight line out of South Plainsville was finally completed. It would allow freight and passenger trains not to interfere with each other out of South Plainsville and also serve new customers that want to ship by rail. But if you had spoke to Milton prior to hearing that from me, you would have thought that Mr. Egan built the line for quite another reason. It's nice that you engines pulling less important trains will finally be out of the way, Milton said pompously to Kevin and Larry. Passengers won't have to endure the sight of your grubby little freight trains when they first leave the station. That's not why Mr. Egan built the line and you know it, snapped Larry. And, said Kevin, rail fans flock to the new line. They like seeing us in a new setting, pulling our heavy freight trains. Freight trains aren't worthy of their attention, Milton retorted. I sense a bit of jealousy, chuckled Larry. Maybe if you ask Mr. Egan, he'll let you travel on the freight bypass sometime. No, he wouldn't. That freight line is not for engine of my standards. Starting in November, just before Thanksgiving and all the way to New Year's, Milton takes priority mail on his express trains. This is something that you'd expect for Milton to complain about, but he knows that the fast mail, especially during the Christmas season, is just as important as his passengers. Steve had already brought his passenger cars to the platform, but yet to attach the mail cars. Milton was getting impatient. Steve, can you please go get my mail cars? I need to depart soon. I'm going to be late. Steve stopped. Sure, he said. Let me drop what I'm doing to handle something for you, he said sarcastically. The station master then explained that they were having trouble loading the mail. How hard is it to load mail, snapped Milton. Well, said Steve, maybe they just load mail differently than you do. Larry puffed by and started bursting out with laughter. You like that one, Larry? Steve replied. I most certainly did, especially if it's at Milton's expense. Milton was cross. Soon the mail cars were soon loaded and attached, and Milton puffed away, trying desperately to make up for lost time. But no matter how fast he went, he couldn't get the train back on schedule. To make matters worse, the turnaround at Otisville took longer than expected, which made him really late for his return journey. The days were shorter this time of year, so by the time he got even close to home, it was very dark. He was furious to see that a distance signal was set to yellow. I'm an express. Why am I getting a yellow signal? He stopped next to a signal tower near a signal that was showing red. The tower man ran out. Khadija has broken down just ahead. Could you please push him to the next siding, please? Milton wanted to protest, but his driver agreed. They proceeded forward and coupled up to the rear of Khadija's train. They pushed her into the siding and then headed on. But there was a problem. The tower operator that stopped Milton didn't inform the other tower operator at the junction that Milton would be proceeding before Khadija. Khadija was pulling a freight train. So that means she was set to go toward the freight line. Milton, who desperately just wanted to get home, didn't notice and headed straight through on the freight line instead of the passenger line. As he made his way along, he noticed his surroundings looked a little different. I don't remember these factories, he said, but then he just blew it off as his eyes playing tricks on him in the dark. Then as he made his way further, he called out, I don't see the inner urban junction, he said. I should have reached it by now. You're right, agreed his driver. Where am I? Up ahead, Milton saw a light. Good, civilization. I could finally figure out where I am. When he rounded the curve, he was surprised, but mostly horrified. There in front of him was the South Plainsville Freight Yard. 
I'm on the freight bypass, he said. Back up, we have to go to the junction now, he said to his driver. Are you crazy, his driver replied. You're already late. Backing up to take the freight line will make us extremely late. But how am I going to get through to the station? Do you need help, said a voice. Milton looked over and saw Chris. Chris was a new engine brought to the Southern United Railroad as a spare engine to help out. I said, do you need help? Chris said again. Milton stuttered, trying to come up with an excuse, but then finally admitted, yes, I need help to get through to the station. Well, I can take care of that for you, Chris said kindly. He went out into the yard and rearranged the freight cars. After he was done, Milton had a clear path to the station. He quickly said thank you to Chris and proceeded through the yard. Milton was hoping no one else would see him. But luck wasn't on his side tonight. Larry and Christian were dropping off some steam locomotive fuel, and they saw Milton puff right past them towards the station. The two engines couldn't help but laugh. Mr. Regan scolded both tower operators for the mix-up. He then spoke kindly to Milton. Mr. Regan knew the incident wasn't Milton's fault, but gave him a lecture on looking at his surroundings. Although Mr. Egan put the incident behind him, the other engines didn't, and for a long time afterwards, they all teased him. Remember when you come back tonight, Milton, called Larry. You need to take the passenger line, not the freight line. And, added Chris, I'm not sure I'll be on yard duty tonight to help you. Milton was not amused and completely regretted all the negative stuff he said about the freight bypass. Wapco takes care of all Phillip 66's other plants, all of them. And we were the only one that Wapco didn't do, and 